Dave Brown with Corey Macklin here at ringside. Ready to go with another day of USWA Championship Wrestling. Oh, we've got a big one today, Dave. Got a great crowd and a great card. What a big show we've got today. Open it back. We'll see Jeff Daniels with Dominique in the opener. Uh, some people from Global, they're hanging around here. They're on the card today. Also, Damien with uh, Prentice. Uh, we'll see who that is also. The King, Jerry Lawler, be here against the man in the 90s. That's going to be a good signal bout. We'll see Jeff Jarrett in here against Psycho. Another good bout. Tony Falk is on the card. Brian Christopher against Eric Embry. How Ooh, about that one? Hey. We've got a big show today, you don't we? You are right. And as you mentioned, a lot of new people hanging around yeah. here. We'll be back to talk more about that situation right after this. About set to go here, and in the ring, Trey Keller is awaiting his opponent. And coming in here, some uh, folks that, uh, well, I, I think they may be uh, familiar actually to some wrestling fans. That's uh, Jeff, uh, well, that's Trey Keller. There's Jeff Daniels right there. Dominique is with him. Now, that's Christopher Love. Yeah, that's Christopher that's Chris Love. Love back behind him. Uh, referee Frank Morell is in the ring, and we are set to go with a single match, one fall, 15 minute time limit. Trey Keller going against Jeff Daniels. And I don't know. It looks like a looks like a consultation over in the corner. Yeah. Between Dominique and Chris Love. Oh, well, they had a few words anyway. Chris Love had a few words with Dominique. Here's Chris Love right here. Yeah, see what he's this. talking about. What, what are you doing here? You know, David, I don't know why you're saying Chris Love all over the building. The last time I was here, that was an assumed name I had to use to get next to Jerry Lawler. But I'm here on legal business now, and my legal name is Bert Prentice, and I would appreciate it if that would you call me, Bert Prentice. Well, Bert Prentice. Oh, I, I guess that answers well, another question that we had. Who is Bert Prentice? Because we saw him uh, saw him listed uh, here. Yeah. That's okay. Bert Prentice. Well, so that's Prentice, and uh, that's Dominique, and that's Jeff Daniels in the ring. Going to work on young Trey Keller. Catches Keller with a big elbow and takes him down. Jeff Daniels, our first look at him in the USWA, picks Keller up and slams him down. He's going to work on Trey Keller here today, Dave. Well, I tell you, he's pretty well, well, not pretty well. He's firmly in control of this match, I would say. Well, he's a uh, well-built guy in there, this Daniels, and he's coming in going after Keller. Haven't given Trey much time at all to get started. Sets him up and catches him right across the face. Takes Trey Keller now, whips him into the rope. Whoa. What a big clothesline on him. Oh, he had some power behind that yeah, one. Yeah, he does. Jeff Daniels following out with a couple of big laps in there. Oh, he's choking him there now. Referee Frank Morrell is telling him to watch it. The throw and watch the choke in there, man. Set straight Keller up. Oh, one of those big left hands in there from Jeff Daniels. Got Trey Keller now. What he's going to do? Sets him up for a suplex here now. Flips him over. And Daniels looks mighty impressive here today. I don't know how much good it's going to be with this Bert Prentice and Dominic in this corner. I think yeah. that's going to be in trouble. I don't like having all the guests at ringside over there. He not came in not with one but two of them. But uh, he, well, he hasn't, hasn't needed there much advice from him, I must say. He has pretty firmly controlled young Trey Keller here. He's going to work on him. Still hammering down on Trey Keller with a couple of double up hands in there. Follows on Keller. Picks Trey Keller up now and whips him into the rope. You know, there's been a lot of negotiations going on. Look at this. He, he had him down, had the shoulders oh, down, but oh, couldn't oh, hold it. Yes, oh, indeed. I that, thought, uh, upset there in the making. Yeah, he had a two count reversal here. Daniels comes off the ropes and. Oh, what a big drop on Keller. Now he's got him down. Two, he got the three. Well, this Jeff Davis looks mighty impressive, Dave. My first look at him on the USWA wrestling. Tough prospect. There's no doubt about it. Uh, it's quite a bit of power there from uh, Jeff Daniels as he gets himself a victory and and Jerry Lawler, your history. You remember that? Jeff Daniels with Dominique and 
Bert Prentice heading out of here. Hey, if you've ever wanted to have uh, USWA wrestling in your area as a fundraising event, take a listen. Here's how you can do it. Now you can have the stars of the USWA in your hometown. It's America's number one fundraiser, USWA Wrestling. The stars, the action, the excitement, USWA Wrestling. For more information on how you can raise money for your organization, write the USWA, Post Office Box 1783, Hendersonville, Tennessee, 37077, or call 615-824-8523. USWA Wrestling, America's number one fundraiser. Well, the ring awaits right there. I thought we were about set to go. Yes, indeed. Here we are. Here comes referee Frank Morrell, and that's John Murphy climbing up onto uh, the ring. His opponent today, well, there's Burt Prentice back with him. Who is this guy? Da this is Damien. That's man. Damien. Boy, he is huge. He is tough. Frank Morrell says, let's get the second match of the day underway. John Murphy is no small wrestler himself, but he's going against the much bigger Damien. I tell you what, I don't like the looks of these guys already. This Damien and this Jeff Daniels. Well, these guys, uh, something else. What a big close line Ooh. there by that Damien. Take John Murphy down. Took him down hard, too. Going to work on Murphy now. Damien with a couple of big forms. See those big licks in there? Yes, indeed. You know, I started to say in the first match, a lot of negotiations have been going on between Global and the USWA regarding the unification of the title. Uh, we'll tell you more about that later on. But yeah. uh, those negotiations, title against title, have basically broken down, I understand. But there are other things in the works. That's John Murphy. He's been worked over by this huge Damien. This guy's got to come in at uh, oh, well over 300 pounds. Picks Murphy up and just slams him down like a potato. Slams Murphy down. Comes down off the rope. And all of that weight on Murphy. Just slapping John Murphy in there now. Damien. Stop it and going to work on Murphy. Pulls him up by his hair and just slams him up against the turnbuckle. Bert Prentice in the corner of Damien, and he's just watching Damien just destroy uh, John Murphy. In there. Got him over that top rope, choking him there now. Gonna have to break that hole. Every Frank Morrell warns him about the choking. Oh, these guys. This Damien and all of these fellows that Bert Prentice has brought into USWA. I tell you, they're tough. <laughs> yeah, they are. That's uh, not a good sign when you see guys coming in like this Damien. Look at that. Oh, he's just destroying John Murphy. Man. He's just going to work on him. Picks Murphy up again and falls with a big headbutt on him. Murphy down on the mat. Damien won't give him much breathing room at all, and he's just going to work on this Murphy. Every chance that Murphy gets a chance to breathe, uh, <laughs> Damien takes it upon himself and just works him over. Slams him down that time. Comes off the rope, all of that way, a big splash. Two, three, got a pin cover, it's over. Damien gets the win, an impressive one too, you must say. Well, Bert Prentice has brought some rugged ones in here, no doubt about it. Now he's escorting Damien out of the ring area, and he's coming this way, too. He's got something to say. Oh, you're dead me! You hear me, Lola? You're dead me! Like everybody's in here looking for Jerry Lawler. We're going to be back with more from the USWA right after this. <laughs> I mentioned a few moments ago a lot of confusion going on regarding negotiations between Global and USWA for unification and all that, and, and I'm a little confused. I, I think all of us are. So we've got two guys here, uh, Mike Samples from the uh, Global and, of course, Guy Coffee from the USWA. I figured you two guys could uh, sort of set us straight on, on what's going on with, uh, with uh, matches that are coming up here involving titles. Well, first off, Dave, I'd like to say how much of a pleasure it's been to work with Guy Coffee. He has been the ultimate perfect businessman. He has returned the calls. He has returned the letters. We've had late night meetings. 
Uh, prior to Mr. Coffee stepping in, working with Eddie Marlin was a nightmare. With Eddie Marlin, it's it's like working with a stubborn old mule. It's either his way or no way. And Mr. Coffee has just been a pleasure to deal with. And we're so close. We're this close to having the unification match signed. There's a few minor details to work out. I'm not going to go into those. But they're very minor. And I know Mr. Coffee. he has shown me good faith so far. Uh, I know we're going to work them out. Now, in the meantime, we're pleased to have two championship matches. Uh, through our negotiations, we were able to come up. The GWF was able to pick out of their top ten candidates the opponent for Jerry Lawler. The USWA was able to pick out of their top ten candidates the opponent for Eddie Gilbert. And things are just going so well. We're, we're this close. Well, well, Mike and Guy, I know, that, I know part of the problem has been different sets of ground rules between the, the, the two federations. Uh, for instance, uh, pile drivers are legal in global or not in the USWA. Uh, belts change hands uh, in the USWA on a DQ. Uh, disqualification, they don't in global. But you, you, you're working through these, huh? Yes, yes we're working through them. I think everything's going to work out fine. We've got two championship matches scheduled. And uh, we've got uh, Jerry Lawler this week going to, with his unified belt going against Marty Jannetty for the championship. Who's the number one contender in Global? Contender in Global, right. And then we have the Global champion, Eddie Gilbert. He's going against the number one contender in the USWA, which is Jeff Jarrett. So we have two world tag teams, two world title matches this week. Here's uh, one of the participants, uh, the king, right here. Yeah, if I could uh, sort of interject something out here. Uh, you know, you're, you're out here talking with Mike Samples from the Global Organization about unifying titles. But if, if I can't believe, Mr. Coffee, that you're out here and you, and, you, and you negotiate with this guy and all of these people from the Global Organization and you don't see what they're trying to do. Do, do you not... Excuse me just a moment. I don't really believe that uh, you were invited out here today, Mr. Lawler. This is a businessman's meeting. You're not a businessman. You're a wrestler. You do your work in the ring. We do our work at a desk and with a phone. You do your work with opponents. We work one-on-one -on -one to do business. And we'd like to continue that. And if you don't mind, maybe you could go back in the back and take care of your business, and we'll take care of ours. Well, let me just say this, Mr. Mike Samples. I do mind, because what you're talking about is my business. You see, wrestling for the USWA and for these fans right here in Memphis, Tennessee, is my business. That has been my business and my only business my entire life. And that's what I have done. I have stayed right here in Memphis, Tennessee, in the USWA, when I could have gone to other organizations, I could have gone to Global, I could have gone to WWF, I could have gone to NWA, but I stayed right here because this is my home, and I love it here, and I love these fans, and I don't want anything to happen to this area. You understand what I'm saying? Now let me, Mr. Coffey, what I'm trying to tell you is that this, this man right here, and sure, he, he probably is a very good businessman, because what they're trying to do, Mr. Coffey, is they're trying to take over, and they're trying to get control of the USWA, and when they do, when they do get control of the USWA, I guarantee you, Eddie Marlin, which he's already probably out of a job, but you'll be out of a job, I'll be out of a championship, and these guys right here, why, why, you know what, See, why don't you go ahead and tell the truth, Mike Samples? Haven't you guys already contacted them people, these people about trying to, trying to buy the USWA? Have you not made contact about that? It's no secret that the Global Wrestling Federation is always interested in expanding. We've looked at the USWA. There are some great assets here, but there's also some major liabilities. I think that Global could come in, streamline the operation. For instance, you're in Memphis every single week, right? Yeah, that's right. That's, that's not cost effective. We could come in a couple of times a year with a big card, international stars, 25, 30 wrestlers maybe. Uh, give the fans something really special to see. We could come in here, do away with this live TV every week. Do you know how much it costs to do live TV every single week? We could send our tape down. No reason to have fans you come in here. You know, you don't, excuse me, you don't really have to go any further. I don't know if everybody can hear. Can you hear what he's saying, Mr. Coffey? Do you people hear what this guy is saying? They're saying, they're 
saying that the, the global organization would like to take over the USW and streamline. That's your word, streamline things, right? So in other words, there wouldn't be wrestling in Memphis every week anymore. You guys would like to have wrestling here live a couple of times a year? That's correct. correct. A couple of times a year, so there won't be any more live wrestling here on a weekly basis. You guys don't want to have a live wrestling show. If it was up to you guys, you would tape a wrestling show in Dallas and send a tape up here for everybody to watch, right? More profitable, yes. More profitable. Right. Well, See, see, that's the problem with people like you. That's the problem with businessmen who wear suits and think about nothing but the bottom line. Because you don't care one iota about these wrestling fans over here. All you care about is what's profitable to you. You don't care if these people have wrestling matches to go see on Monday nights. You don't care if they have a live wrestling show. You don't care if Dave has a job as a wrestling announcer. You don't care if Corey's got a job. All you care about is bottom line and what's profitable to you, right? And what he's trying to do is, he's got, he's got Marty Jannetty. And what are you and what are you? Jerry, doing? Jerry, calm down, my friend. Please calm down. First of all, come out of the dark ages. Marty Jannetty hasn't been with the WWF for a long, long time, and we're looking forward to coming to Memphis to kick your butt, my friend. Why are you so scared? Why are you so scared? Marty Jannetty will take you, my friend. Nobody. You've never wrestled anybody with the aerial attack of Marty Jannetty. You know you're going to lose. Tell these people you're scared. Look at this man shake. Look at the king shake. Mr. Coffee, here's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm not shaking for Marty Jannetty. I'm not scared of losing to any wrestler on earth. What I am scared of, Mr. Coffee, is that you're going to sit by and let guys like this flim flam you out of, a, out of our whole operation here. I don't... I don't did you not see what they're trying to do? Yeah, we've had people trying to buy the USWA for years. They've come come out of the woodwork trying to buy it. It's not for sale. You don't. You must not have any confidence in yourself. I have all the confidence in the world that you can beat Martin Jannetty. I have all the confidence in the world that Jeff Jarrett can beat Eddie Gilbert. Well, let me just say this. Just a little history lesson. A little small history lesson. You remember this, and the fans out there know this. In 1988, I won the World Heavyweight Championship for the AWA. The AWA World Heavyweight Championship. And simply because, simply because I had their title and I didn't want to travel all over the place, I wanted to stay right here in the USWA. Now let me ask you this, is there an AWA anymore? Is there an American Wrestling Association in business anymore? No, there's not. I went and I had a unification match with Kerry Von Erich and World Class Wrestling in December of 1988, Chicago, Illinois. I won the World Class title. And because I wanted to stay here in the USWA, is there a World Class organization in business today? No, exactly right. And let me just say this. If you let one of their wrestlers come into this area and buy some, some fluke or whatever it is, I'm not, you know, I'm not standing out here and saying that I can beat every Tom, Dick, and Harry in the world, but I am saying I've, I've been pretty successful. But should somebody come in here and take this title and take it back to the global organization, I promise you, Mr. Coffee, and I promise everybody out here, there won't be a USWA anymore. There won't be a Saturday morning TV show right here on Channel 5 that's live. It'll be a tape out of Dallas, and I promise you, there won't be a weekly Monday night card down at the Mid-South Coliseum because these guys then will be in control of everything, and these guys right here then will do what is only profitable and what is good for the bottom line, and that won't be catering to the good fans of Memphis, Tennessee. I can guarantee you that. Jerry, I got all the confidence in the world that you can, you can beat him. There's no problem. You're going to beat Marty Jannetty. You can beat anybody else that they bring in. We're going to be here on Saturday morning. We're going to be at the Mid-South Coliseum for a long, long time. You know, Jerry, you've been playing king too long. It's time for you to go back into the dressing room and let the businessman hash out what's going to happen here. It's, it's not your destiny. It's none of your business. Go play king with yourself, and we'll see you Monday or whenever, wherever, all around the world. All right, let me just say this to you, and let me say this to you, Mr. Mike Samples, you two big businessmen in your fancy suits here. What this is all going to come down to, and the bottom line is, it's not going to come down to any negotiations. 
that's done in a, in a, in a business room. It's not going to come down to negotiations in an office with men wearing suits like yourself. The bottom line is it's going to come down to Monday night, Marty Jannetty and the King in the Mid-South Coliseum. And the way I look at it, this match is not just for this belt, but this match is for the whole USWA's future and for all of these wrestling fans' future. And I'm going to tell you something. You're looking at a guy right here that is not going to let him down. Do you understand what I'm saying? All right. You better watch out, Mr. Uh, that's, uh, that's the situation, then. You hear it from the king. You hear it from these gentlemen. Mr. Sample's ideas of how it should be. Guy Coffey is confident that the king can defend the title and the USWA. We'll be back after this. <laughs> now two of the least popular people in the USWA, Laura Davenport and the man of the 90s. And now there's certainly the most popular man, not only in the USWA, anywhere around here, the king himself, Jerry Luller, the unified world heavyweight title in hand. And the king is set to do battle against the man of the 90s. With a man of the 90s, you always have to consider who is in the corner. And there she is, Lauren Davenport. will be at ringside in the corner of the man of the 90s. Listen to the crowd. Lawler, Lawler. No doubt who they're for in this match. It'll be one fall, 15 minutes time. Referee Frank Morrell is called for the bell. Lauren Davenport's out of the ring, down in the managing area. And here we go, Corey Macklin. We're ready, Dave. The king and man of the 90s tingling up. One ball, 15 minutes in time, and there goes man of the 90s. He gets out on the floor. You know what you fans at home did not see is just before uh, we uh, came out of the commercial break, the man of the 90s was yelling at the crowd, insulting people in the yeah. crowd constantly. And the crowd is saying, how about it now, man of the 90s? <laughs> the king is in here facing you. He doesn't have much to say at all. He's got to keep his mind on Jerry Law. And I tell you what, Lauren Davenport doesn't have much to say at all either because the king got a hold of her last time these two tangled up here on TV for the single bout. There she goes again, interfering in the thing. Nails Lawler right on the side there. All right, Court, look out. We got we have guests who yeah. have arrived at ringside here. Eddie Gilbert and Burt Prentice are just standing at ringside. They're about 10 feet away from the ring apron. There you can see them uh, yeah. from behind on the left side of the screen. That's Eddie Gilbert that you can barely see and, uh, and Burt Prentice. Lawler sees them and is telling Frank Morrell about it. And apparently Frank says as long as they stay well back from the ring, that's okay. Yeah, that's what he's telling us. They hadn't interfered in about it. Eddie Gilbert's just out here with his global heavyweight championship set in there, along with Bert Prentice. And uh, Lawler's noticing, though, and he doesn't like it. And you can't much blame Jerry, either. That's true. The global presence has been uh, something here today. As the uh, first couple of matches we had were won by global wrestling products. And convincingly. Yeah, that's true. Man of the 90s whips Lawler into the turnbuckle. Mm. Goes in after him and the king moves out of the way. And man of the 90s got that middle buckle there. He went in with that knee trying to catch Jerry. Lawler said to Eddie Gilbert and Bert Brennan's, hey, if you want something, come on in here. They're still standing outside of the ring looking on. Jerry picks up man of the 90s. Body slams him down. Lawler's inviting yeah. Eddie Gilbert into the ring. Said, hey, you got business with me. Just come right on in here right now. Hey, I tell you, what? Bert Prince is over there. Went over there and gave man of the 90s. You give him something over there. He's got a chain wrapped around his fist. That's and what he, it was. He nails Lawler with it, too. Sends Jerry down. Boy, did he nail Lawler. Man of the 90s going to work on the king. Bert Prentice went over there and interfered in the thing and handed Man of the 90s some kind of object. You said it was a chain he had? Yeah, I saw the chain wrapped around uh, Man of the 90s fist when he came out of that corner, and that's that's what uh, that's where he had to get a look at Lawler yeah, Davenport. Yeah. Pulling hair, hitting Lawler with a fist. Oh, Jerry's got the 
play four on one out here is what he's doing. He's going against Van in the 90s. Lawrence Davenport is ringside in the fair. Gilbert and Prince is out here. Are you talking about it. a header? Four against one is what Lawler is looking at. Oh, reverse neck breaker yeah. by Van of the 90s. Lawler lying on the mat. There's a mistake by Man of the 90s. He maybe should have gone for the pin there while he had the king down. He had a good move on it, that reverse neck breaker. We'll send you down, and Man of the 90s picks Jerry up. Side suplex coming up. There it is. Ah, boy, you can see him setting up on it, and Lawler's down for the count of two. Oh, he's only a two. two though. Man of the 90s, Mel Lawler with that chain early on. Yeah, which was handed to him by Burt Prentice. That's keep right. In mind. And Jerry's still hanging in there. Bags Lawler up against the turnbuckle. And the King nails him with a big right hand. Lawler shut it up for Frank Morrell. Now he had a turn in there. And he nails Lawler with the thing again. He's got it right there. He caught him. He's, he's got it. And he nailed Lawler with it. And the crowd trying to tell the referee what happened. Lauren Davenport is telling, hey, stay out of it. Oh, there's a count of two again on Lawler. Close, too. Oh, my goodness. Real close there on Jerry. Only a two count, though. Lawler kicked out of it. And man of the night, they slugs Lawler again. Gets only a two. Burt Prentice and Eddie Gilbert are still here at ringside. They're about three or four feet away from the ring. He's standing all looking. Fighting uh, Eddie Gilbert back in the ring, and Eddie Gilbert looks like he's starting that way, but uh, Bert Prentice holding him back. Now here comes Mike Samples and Guy Coffee to get in between them. Eddie Marlin, Jeff Jarrett, everybody trying to get in between them and keep them apart. We're, they're, yeah, we're going to keep them separated. No match coming up between those two right here. We'll, yeah. we'll take a break. We'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> just say one thing real quick I won't take up a lot of time here you saw what happened now let me tell you something all of you global officials all of your managers all your men in the suits you bring them all on you line up anybody you want to get you line up Eddie Gilbert you line up anybody that you want to and you bring them all on because apparently from the way it looks I'm the only one that knows what's going on around here and knows that you jerks are trying to take over this whole organization and get it out of town well, now they've gone off, and they've got Marty Jannetty, who, uh, last time I checked, he was wrestling in the WWF. But now, apparently, they've got him with the global organization. Just like he said, they're reaching out. They're bringing in the talent. They're bringing in the organization. They want to expand, and they want to suck things up, and they want to take over everything. Well, you're not taking over here. You're not taking over the USWA, and you're not taking over the King. Because in order to take over the USWA, you got to go through me, and i got news for you, boys. That's going to be a heck of a hard job. There's been a lot of them trying to do it in the past, and there ain't been many that's been able to say they have done it. And Marty Jannetty, i got news for you, boy. If you think you've been to the top, if you think you've been to all the big organizations in the world, well, you got another thing coming, because you ain't never had a match in your life like you're going to have this Monday night when you step in the ring with a king in front of all of these thousands of Memphis, Tennessee fans. So get ready, punk, because you got your work cut out for you Monday night. You know that? The king feeling the weight of defending the USWA on his shoulders here. Let's go over the complete action coming up Monday night at the Mid-South Coliseum. Monday the holiday, of course. Hope you have a great Memorial Day weekend, and what better way to wrap it up than with a visit to the Mid-South Coliseum Monday night. Box office, by the way, will be open at 2 o'clock Monday afternoon. Special uh, holiday schedule. 2 o'clock Monday is when the box office will be open for the special holiday schedule. Look at this. 
seven-match tournament, winner gets a shot at the USWA Southern title. First round matches go like this. It'll be Cat Garrett going against Jeff Daniels with Dominique. Boy, we know Cat Garrett very well, and we saw Jeff Daniels there Daniels today. Tough guy, yeah. He was impressive. The next first round match will be Damian going against Larry Arch. Also, Damian, Damian tough, impressive yeah. in his match, too. Man of the 90s with Lauren Davenport will be going against Tony Falk in yet another single match. And then in the final first round match, a former University of Tennessee football great Rex Hargrove will be going against uh, that, that very weird yeah. psycho. Some great first round matches coming up. That's seven to begin with. Uh, okay, that's, that's well, four first round matches. Yeah. Then you got semi uh, semifinal round semifinal. coming up for uh, the, uh, the uh, Southern uh, contender. And then, of course, the finals. And the final determines who will be the top contender for whoever holds the Southern title. Grudge match then comes up after that. You got Moondog Spot going against Eric Embry. Eric Embry, boy, I tell you, after that injury to his eyes, he has really been on fire looking for Moondog Spot, and he gets a shot at him in a grudge match Monday night. World tag titles on the line. No time limit. No stopping the match. Belt will change hands on a disqualification. There must be a winner. The world tag titles at stake as the Power Twins will be going against the Moon Dogs. Then, Southern title match, Brian Christopher will be going against Billy Travis. Billy Travis yeah. is back, yeah. He made his appearance known last week at the Mid-South Coliseum, and this week, he's going for that Southern title of Brian Christopher. Global title match coming up. The global champion, Eddie Gilbert, will be going against the top contender in the USWA. That, of course, is Jeff Jarrett. Jeff facing Eddie Gilbert, the winner will have the Global Heavyweight Championship. And then, the USWA Unified World Title on the line. Rocker Marty Jannetty, I think you wrestling fans around here remember Marty Jannetty, and you know all about him. As uh, Lawler said, he's been all around the country, he's been all around the world. Burt Prentice will be in his corner. He's the number one contender in Global, and he will be looking for the title of the king, Jerry Lawler. As Jerry Lawler says, the business deal is put together. He is not happy with it. He says, I understand what they're trying to do. He sees a case where the USWA's open door policy, which he supports, is sort of being taken advantage yeah. of. And they're going around exactly. the side here, and he doesn't like the way it looks. But he says, we're going to settle it in the middle of the ring. This is the way to do it for me to beat Marty Jannetty Monday night. Taking advantage of is the exact word to use in that, Damon. Uh, the King sees it, and he's going to be up for that. We've got 12 matches lined up for Monday night. got a big night coming up box office remember will be open at two o'clock don't forget to multi-tune and tire all during the month of may is sponsoring the matches at the mid-south coliseum uh, uh, no purchase is necessary for the giveaways there will be a box in the south lobby of the coliseum for you to register they're going to give away tune-ups oil changes alignments uh, t-shirts eventually this month they're going to give away a set of tires and also gift certificates to the uh, mid-south coliseum concession stands for the fans too all of that coming up monday night 7 30 at the memphis mid-south coliseum what a great way to wrap up memorial day we'll be back here in just a moment <laughs> Jeff Jarrett said it this way. There he is right there, Jeff Jarrett. We got some comments from Jeff about the situation coming up. See, uh, see what he has to say about it. He's greeting the fans. Boy, he's got a lot of fans too. Let me say, young man who won Rookie of the Year when he first broke into the wrestling business, and man, has has he moved to the top. Here he comes right here. Jeff, Jared, Jeff, welcome. Good to have you here today. I'm sure you've heard what's going on around here. Boy, Dave, I sure did. You know, uh, uh, Jerry's pretty upset, and I can understand why. But, uh, uh, and I'm sure he's going to let do, do uh, let most of his talking be in the ring. Mm -hmm. And that's where it should be. Sure. But, uh, you know, Dave, out of everything I've always thought, out of everything that's negative, you can always find a positive. And, and uh, you know, Dave, I was just thinking there in the back, I, I had a basketball coach in high school named Ronnie Sarver. And he said, and he taught me that no, no person or team or, or business, wh whatever it may be, no one will ever exceed their expectations. And I've always expected the best out of myself. And I think Jerry has also expected the best. And, and you know, I've got a big, a, awful big shot this week against Eddie Gilbert for the global title. 
And you know, as you walk down that, you know, as you walk through life, uh, through the lightness, and then when you finally get to the darkness and you take that step, you know, two things are going to happen. Either you're going to put your foot on the ground, or maybe you're going to hope that, that you hope that God teaches you to fly. And you never know what's going to happen. But Eddie Gilbert, I just got a few things to say to you. You hadn't been around here the last couple of months, and I've just come out of the toughest matches that I've ever been in my life. We've had boards, cans, chairs, you name it. And now I'm going after a title. I feel like I'm prepared. I expect the best out of myself. And Eddie Gilbert, I know one thing. I beat you before, and I can do it again. And I feel that that global title, yeah, you're wearing it around here real proud, and you got all your businessmen. Well, you all your businessmen and all your managers and everything else, you, and all your big mouth, you can throw it right out the window. Because when we get in the ring, it's just going to be me and you, and we can wrestle, we can fight. But, Eddie Gilbert, you better show up, and you better be ready. All right, Jeff Jarrett. Boy, I tell you what, I love that attitude. Uh, expect the best, because it ain't going to happen if you don't. And that's the way he is going in there. I'm sure that's the way he's going in there right now. There's uh, that psycho wandering around out of ringside. He's, he's over on the wrong side of the ring. Yeah, look at that. Uh, referee is calling for the bell. I, that's a good move, Frank Morell. He's going to count him out. He's got to ten to get in there. He loses. <laughs> but psycho, uh, when he heard the bell, he knew he where to go. Yes, he headed for the ring. Sure did. He's against Jeff Jarrett. And here's Corey Macklin. Thank you, Dave Brown. We're underway. One ball, 15 minutes in time. And there goes psycho out of the ring there. This guy coming in out of Bellevue Middle Hospital. Now, his nurse first told us that I think he was wrestling in, from Louisiana. Then we heard the word from Los Angeles. So, now we got an official word from this guy, but we do know he's from somewhere near one of those hospitals. <laughs> Jeff, go oh. after him. He, he nailed him. Yeah, he kicked him in the rear end and knocked him into the ropes, and the rope broke. The psycho fell on that middle rope. Jeff takes him down. Good move there by Jeff. That psycho fell over that middle rope there. And Jeff Jarrett going to work on him. Twisting the arm of psycho. Picks him up. Slams him hard to the mat. Falls with an elbow on him. Jeff Jarrett, as you said, Dave, when he first started, he won that Rookie of the Year award. And He's really come on strong in the USWA. Psycho pulled his hair there. Yank Jeff by his hair and pulled him down to the mat. And uh, Jared is up on his feet, ready for him now. Tingles up with Psycho. Backs him up against the turnbuckle. Psycho whips him to the turnbuckle. Jeff goes in and misses. There you Hard elbow there. Well, that middle rope broken and missing on one side of the ring. Whoa. Psycho dropped Jeff back down. Good that move. Oh, look at this. Psycho grabs the broken rope and wraps it around Jeff's throat. I was just going to say that's another element that uh, there's quite a danger to both these wrestlers. If they should hit in the middle over there, they could go tumbling right out of that ring under the floor. On that good concrete floor. What a move Psycho just used there against Jeff. Just in trouble here. Two count, he was mm. close. Well, the psycho is a tough wrestler in the USWA. And he's going to work on Jeff Jarrett. He doesn't have much knowledge, he says, of wrestling, but he is just a crazy man when he gets in there. No, psycho. I don't, I don't know how Jeff feels right now, but I think looking ahead in the coming days to the match that Jeff has got coming up, it's good to go against tough competition like Psycho. You know, you hear people talk about basketball teams. They schedule the tough opponents throughout the season, then they're ready come NCAA tournament time. All right. Well, right here, Jeff's got this big match coming up, but he, he doesn't have an easy match here today to keep the level of competition up. That's right. Reminds me of one of my favorite teams, Memphis State Tigers. I tell you. Played a tough schedule all year long, and when they got down to the nick of it, they were ready for that competition. Good point there, too, Dave. Psycho whipped him to the ropes. Jeff catches him with a clothesline and takes him down. Reversal oh, here. Yeah, look out. Ah, Jeff falls over. Falls on that knee. Psycho yeah. is... He hit his knee on the mat when he uh, rolled over there. Psycho's going to work on it, too. Whips him over. Hey, Jeff! Takes him down! Two, three! He got it! Got the cover! One, two, three! Jeff Jarrett! The yes, winner! Sir.
Give it to Jeff Jarrett. Tough match coming up. Tough match here today, but Jeff steps out of here with a hand raise. He's a winner over Psycho. We'll be back after this. Gilbert headed this way. He's got the uh, global title in his hand out here in uh, coat and tie today, observing the situation a little bit earlier. And uh, that belt is uh, going to be on the line. It's very pretty belt, isn't it, Dave? It's a very attractive belt, no doubt about it. First thing right off the bat here that I want to say that last week, uh, sitting here at the desk with you, and what happened with me and Jerry Lawler. I never got to say something I really wanted to. Jerry Lawler, you stood out here last week and you said, I want to be Jerry Lawler. Why would I want to be Jerry Lawler when I'm hot stuff Eddie Gilbert, the greatest professional athlete in wrestling today? Why, Lawler? Because that's the only way with your big ego that you can figure out. That's the reason why I win matches. It's not because of you, Lawler. I win matches because I am a Gilbert. And winning matches runs in the Gilbert family, which brings me upon another pawn in the chess game, Mr. Jeff Jarrett. Now, I see all the negotiations going on, too. Mr. Guy Coffee, Mr. Mike Samples, they can't get all their stuff down together or whatever, so now they made a decision. I've got to wrestle Jeff Jarrett. Well, Jeff, let me say you this right now. Growing up, you were nothing but a scrawny, snot-nosed punk kid that tried to play basketball. And then you started, you started going to the gym and man, you made yourself work out and you really turned out to be a great athlete. But the difference between you and I, sir, and son, is that I'm a Gilbert and you're a Jarrett. So why don't I put this belt down just a minute and let's just go as far as saying this match means just a little bit more than the global title being on the line. It's a family matter. You're representing the Jarrett family and Eddie Marlin, and I'm representing the Gilbert family. What's so unique in this is that actually the USWA is kind of like a family itself. Dave, you're a part of it. You see, I'm the black sheep of that family, people. Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert is the black sheep of the family. Jeff Jarrett, this week, you want a shot at me? You're going to get your shot, brother. Then I'm going to chop you down. And then I'm coming after your so-called king or whoever the world champion is then because, Jeff, remember one thing. Another big difference between you and I is, is that you have been wrestling six years. I have 13 long, hard years behind me, and it's going to take a hell of a man to take the global title away from me. And Lawler, then you and all your lawyers and the Mr. Coffees and the Eddie Marlins throughout here cannot keep hot stuff Eddie Gilbert from becoming the unified heavyweight champion of the USWA. There's a word from uh, Eddie Gilbert recognizes the competition in uh, Jeff Jarrett, but uh, confident he can win it and then get a shot at the king or the unified belt, whoever has it. Um, stepping into the ring right now, Tony Falk. And by the way, we've made an adjustment to the ring. Uh, the ring uh, leaves a bit to be desired as far as the ropes are concerned due to uh, one of the ropes breaking, but uh, the bottom rope has now been moved up to what should be the middle rope. So we've got two top ropes, if you will. The middle one is a little bit loose. That's still a problem for the wrestlers in the ring, but Keith Eric goes against Tony Falk, and here's Corey. Thank you, Dave. We're underway. One fall, 15 minutes in time. And Keith Eric is coming in. He's the opponent for Tony Falk. Falk wrestling in out of Dallas, Texas. Keith Eric wrestling out of Memphis, Tennessee. With Falk into the ropes. Oh, beautiful sunset flip by Tony. Only got two, though. Keith Eric. Back Falk up against the turnbuckle. Oh, Keith Eric, he pulled his hair. Well, Keith gets in trouble. He starts to complain. The way Tony looks and the way he's looked the last few weeks, Keith may be in trouble a lot of this match. Oh, yeah. Falk's been on fire, and he's going to work on Keith Eric. Now, there's some hair pulling, yeah. but it's Keith Eric that yanked a handful. Telling Frank, you see him pulling my hair. Saw you pull his. That's all. Oh, bags Eric up against the turnbuckle and just throws him out of there. Falls oh. with a drop kick from Tony Falk. How about it? 
Falk with some good moves on Keith Eric in there. Toast him out of that corner. And follow with a big drop kick. Nice move from Tony Falk. Keith Eric. Working Falk over. That was a big forearm, boy. Falk. Mm. Turns this thing around and goes to work out to Keith Eric. Sets him up, Falk. Oh, he tried to get a bulldog out of it, and Eric just that, falls, falls down. That was uh, a, a good move by Keith Eric as he just held on. Uh, he was about to be bulldogged by Tony Falk, but he held on, and Tony's the one that wound up with a disadvantage there. Tony oh, look at this. Small small back at this, too. He got him. Yes, he got he three out of it. Good move from Tony Falk. Great move by Tony as he got that jackknife, rolled him down into the small package, and it was all over for Keith Eric. That was a good match, yeah, let me really tell you. Good, hey, Tony Falk gets the victory here over Keith Eric. Back with more after this. It was a match in which Brian Christopher was going against Dr. Tom Pritchard. Stipulations on the match. If Brian Christopher lost, he lost his belt. If Tom Pritchard lost, he had to leave the USWA. There was an appearance at the end of all of that by none other than Billy Travis. Take a look. Dr. Pritchard slams him up against the turnbuckle. He's not letting up on this Brian Christopher at all. Big chop that sounded all over the Coliseum. All reversal here. All reversal again. Pritchard right into referee Frank Morrell over there. Well, Brian Christopher know what he was doing in there. Hey, you better watch him. What has he got? Oh, Pritchard knocks it in the face of Christopher, rolls him up, he's got a pin cover, he's got him pinned. Looks like he's got him, he's got him covered. The referee Frank Morrell is still knocked out, though, Christopher's all powered up. Chris, Eddie Gilbert, what is he doing here at ringside? Christopher goes in his boot and grabs the chain. from him and now Brian Christopher sends him down sets Christopher up now he's got him covered again hey I tell you what you better watch Eddie Gilbert over there Gilbert is in the action he's got a two count ah, Chris, I tell you what Brian Christopher's foot is up on that bottom rope but Eddie Gilbert is out on the concrete floor also he grabbed Christopher's foot and put it up on that bottom Gilbert grabs Pritchard by his leg. Pritchard's got a pin. Two. That's a three. He got a three count in there. Referee Frank Morrell is still tied. He's looking the other way, but he's turning up to ring the bell. Christopher gets the win and a little over 13 minutes in the bout. Tom Pritchard's going to have to leave the USWA. Boy, oh, I tell you, this Eddie Gilbert is something else. Came out here and interfered in the bout.
Christopher had to feel like he'd been hit by a buzzsaw after that, and as Billy Travis said, see you next week. Well, indeed, he will be seeing him in this upcoming week. Uh, well, here he is. That's changed his attitude at all. Here's the Southern heavyweight champion, Hello, Brian Dave Christopher. Graham. Hello, all my fans. I know you love it's, it's time. There's been a lot of talking out here today, but it's time for everybody's favorite part of the show. That's when I do my talking. I know it's my favorite, and I know it's your favorite. But, but let me tell you what. I'm not as happy as it may seem. Because everybody saw that tape, and they saw about 20 minutes after I done slapped Tom Pritchard this way, and I done slapped him back that way, and then I threw him down, and I beat him one, two, three, right in the middle of the ring, sent him on his way, he packed his bag, and he's heading to I don't know where, unemployment line probably. Then after that, Billy Joe Travis. The big shot Joe Travis comes down there and jumps in the ring, jumps me from behind. He jumped me from behind, Dave. I didn't even see him coming. It's like Pearl Harbor. And then he thinks he's a big shot. But boy, all you've done, sissy, is make me mad. You have made me mad. Because now, now this week, you got to step in there with me. And just like everybody else, when you mess with me, you lose your job. Isn't that right? Just about everybody mess with me, they lose their job. Tom Pritchard's gone. What about Eddie Marlin? And he's fired. <laughs> Send it. Fired. Anyway, Joe Travis, you keep messing with me, nothing good can happen. And one last word, it's a warning. You bring one of them little guitars, a little guitar down to the ring, I won't bust it over your head, nuh uh, -uh. I'm going to bend you over, and I'm going to take that guitar, and I'm going to ram it where the sun don't shine. Oh, where the sun don't shine, Billy Joe. You better not show up. Well, the match is signed, Brian Christopher. As you know, you come out here, you can run your mouth all day, and he's very good at that. But yeah, I think you saw that videotape just before the interview. Be ready for that match coming up. He's in the ring right now. Oh, his, his, his back of his trunk said mean and nasty. I noticed in the videotape today it says a perfect 10. Brian Christopher in the ring right now. Here's referee Frank Morell. Oh, yeah, somebody, somebody to beat up he's looking for. Well, we'll have an opponent in here for him. You better watch it because he's got Eric Embry. Oh, I beg your pardon. Before we get to that match, here's a word from the USWA. The USWA Wrestling Academy. If it's your dream to join the top stars in professional wrestling, if it's your ambition to climb into the square circle, if all you've been waiting for is a chance to learn pro wrestling, now the USWA Wrestling Academy is underway. Fitness trainer Jim in Cooperville, Tennessee, personal instruction in bodybuilding, weight control, health, nutrition, and personality projection. Learn to be a professional wrestler taught by the top stars in the USWA. Send that envelope to USWA Wrestling Academy, P.O. Box 1783, Hendersonville, Tennessee, 37077. Learn with the best, the USWA. Brian Christopher's in the ring. Here comes Eric Kimberly, his opponent today. Christopher's saying, give me somebody to beat up. He's got his hands full of some boy and Eric Kimberly. I guarantee you that. Let me tell you. Here's Eric right here, Eric. You know, there's a whole lot going on around here, man, that I should probably be involved in, that I should be thinking about. But the only dead plain thing that I can think about is you, Richard Lee, and your moon dogs, man. They, they tried to take my sight away. Then guy coffee, Mr. Coffee. Now, you don't belong, don't deserve to be called Mr. Man, because coffee... You couldn't hold a light to Eddie Merlin that's been a matchmaker around here or anywhere else. You won't give me the matches that I want, man, against the moon dogs, because you know what I happen. You know what I happen, Coffee. Every deck on one of them, man, is going to have an eyeball fall out of their head. 
It's real simple. You won't give me the matches. You won't even give me a match against them in some of the towns, man. But there's one thing that Coffee don't have control over, though, man. And you know what that is? You know what he don't have control over? He don't have control over me. So, Moon Dog, we we're in the same building, the same restaurant. Why do we have a match that night in that building? You can bet your bottom dollar that you're going to feel the pain and the, the pain back, Moondog, for what you got to do to my eyes, man. And right now, talking about payback, I'm going to do Prince's a little favor. All right. Eric Embry headed for the ring. He's thinking about Moondog. That has been the case ever since they hurt his eyes. Referee calls for the bell, and Eric Embry goes after Brian Christopher. Oh, my goodness, what a match we got going. It's a non-title match. Look at Embry go. He's going to work on Brian Christopher in there. Oh, Christopher. There goes Brian Christopher out on the gun street floor now. Oh, no, he did not. Rich Rover complaining. Then he hit him with something. <laughs> Christopher. Uh, being a crybaby yeah. down here on the floor. Back in the ring. I didn't hear what he said to him, but Eric Embry. He told Eric he's made him mad in there. Oh, well, welcome to the club. Embry is really mad, let me tell you. Not so much at Christopher, although he's upset with Christopher, I think, over what happened uh, in regard to uh, Tom Pritcher having to leave the USWA. And he's thinking moon dogs, let me tell you. This is a good thing about here today on USWA Wrestling. Eric Embry and Brian Christopher, non-title bow. Christopher's holding that Southern Heavyweight Championship. Also, he's got the Texas title on there. True. Yeah, we have had a great show here today. Great oh, action for the band. Lots of matches, and we're not through yet. Not at all. Not by any means. Embry and Christopher, one fall, 15-minute time limit here today for TV time. And... He was biting on yeah, him. Yeah, he there. bit him on the leg. He sure did. What is Christopher? I tell you what. What an attitude this kid has. You know, this guy, he'll do anything to get his opponent down and to get over on his opponent. Biting on Eric Embry's leg over there. And he hit him with a fist there. Hello, Embry, and he's going to work on Embry. This Christopher is some kind of tough, too. Got that funny choking him with it. Yeah, he's going to have to break that all. Frank Morrell warns him. Slugs Embry with a right hand. Christopher flips Embry over. Comes down and misses. Embry gets up. He's ready for Brian Christopher. Christopher is struggling, staggering around the ring. And Embry is going to work on Brian Christopher. This one's for Pritchard. Oh, this one is for Dr. Tom Pritchard, who had to leave the USWA due to Christopher. And Embry nails it in on the right. He's going to work on Christopher. Oh, the moon dog. got one shot in at the moon dog with a board but they got him tied up three against one yeah they, they got him in there well at least enough out here for eric day we've got to get some help well, out here boys. brian christopher's over here celebrating the match will end i think probably just stopped by the referee due to that outside interference here comes jerry lawler jeff jarrett the power twin, power twin. oh my goodness Eric Embry wants to mess with somebody. Mess with us. Yeah, well, let's do it at the Coliseum or someplace like that. One of the arenas, not right here. We'll be back here in just a moment. Oh, my goodness. We got a gathering here. Jeff Jarrett, Jerry Lawler, Eric Embry, and Eddie Marlin. You know, I'm going to be in Jonesboro tonight, and I'm proud of the matches we have over there. The and I don't mean to interrupt you, man, but like I said, there's one thing on my mind, man. The moon dog, you're going to be in Jonesboro tonight, and I will, too. It'll be 
Here came in the king against the moon dogs, and this young man right here gets to go out and set a heavyweight title against Bob. All right, very good. Jerry? You know, I'm just looking forward to it. Like you said, there are a lot of things going on. I can't wait till Monday night. I can't wait till tonight. There's a lot of excitement in the USWA. As far as I'm concerned, the USWA is the most exciting, the toughest competition, the best wrestling organization anywhere in the world today. And that's the one I want to be associated with. And if you don't believe it, you just check us out tonight in Jonesboro, Arkansas, or Monday night at the Mid-South Coliseum. Jeff, I know you want to talk about Jonesboro. One quick thing, right before, you know, I, I got a busy, I got a real busy day tomorrow, always, too. Always. always busy. Can you get a shot of these couple of these young guys right over here? They're from Bay, Arkansas. Those are a couple of Bay Sluggers. Well, last week, the King's Army went up to Dyersburg. We had the big benefit doubleheader up there. We played a tough team, man. We were able to squeak out victories. We won them both. We got two teams over there in Bay, Arkansas. We're going up against the Sluggers tomorrow to help raise money for the Bay High School. First 200 people get a free ticket to Monday Night Wrestling, so we'll see you there tomorrow at 1.30 at Yellow Jacket Field in Bay. Tonight, I'm going to be in Jonesboro, Arkansas. Moon Dogs, get ready for me and Ember. You ain't never faced a team like that. And also then, tomorrow night, it's going to be down in Holly Springs, Mississippi at Rush College. They're having the biggest gospel singing jubilee in the world ever Corey's there tomorrow night. Too. Corey's yeah. going to be there. He and I both were going to be there tomorrow night at Rush College. Right. It's going to be big. You right. are going to be busy. You're busy, too. Exactly. I think Jerry said it all. But tonight in Jonesboro, I'm looking forward to it. Monday night in Memphis, I'll be there. All right. Fans in and around Jonesboro, get ready. Corey, fill them in on all the action oh, coming up. Oh, we've got a lot of the Dave started tonight. Jonesboro, Arkansas. It's tonight, Bell Times, 8 o'clock. Earl Bell Community Center right there on Church Street. As you saw them all out here, the king will be there. Jeff Jarrett, Eric Embry, Richard Lee have those moon dolls out there tonight. Ladies match all lined up. Bell Times at 8 o'clock tonight in Jonesboro at the Earl Bell Community Center. Blyville, Arkansas coming up. On Thursday night, May 28th, there's the National Guard Omri on Division Street. Jeff Jarrett, Moondog, those power twins to be there. Ladies match, plus Eric Embry all lined up for Bob in Arkansas. Friday, May 29th, Kasut, Mississippi, there at the high school at 8 o'clock. Jeff Jarrett, Bull of Hastings, Moondogs, Eric Embry, Keith Haynes, all at the high school there in Kasut, Mississippi. Bell time is at 8 p.m. Bolivar, Tennessee, Thursday, June 4th, there at the Bolivar Central High School. It's sponsored by Hardeman County, J.C. Jeff Jarrett, Eric Embry, Moondogs, Lady Match, all lined up for Bolivar. Collierville slash Rossville, Tennessee, Friday night, June 5th, there at the Rossville School. Jerry Lawler, Jeff Jarrett, Moondogs, all lined up for Rossville. Also, championship wrestling coming soon to Forest City, Arkansas. 8 p.m. there at the Civic Center on Thursday, June 11th. Friday night, Kennett, Missouri, back in Kennett at the American Legion building there. 8 p.m., Jeff Jarrett, Moondogs, Eric Embry, all lined up for Kennett, Missouri coming soon. Friday night, June 19th, 8 p.m., Ripley, Tennessee. There this time at the football field there at the high school. Jerry Lawler, Jeff Jarrett, Moondogs, there in Ripley, Ripley, Mississippi, Friday night. June 26th at 8 p.m. That is all of the USWA Championship Wrestling. Jeff Jarrett, Moondogs, Eric Embry all lined up for Ripley, Mississippi. And hey, don't forget, tomorrow evening, Holly Springs, Mississippi, the King and I are going to be out in Rust College with uh, Reverend Shears, the Gospel Songbirds, the big gospel program down there. We'll I tell you what, big action coming up at the USWA beginning tonight in Jonesboro and continuing for the next several weeks. By the way, the King asked me to remind everybody, too, about his show tomorrow morning right here on TV5. If you're a baseball fan, especially if you were a baseball fan back in the 50s and the 60s, don't miss this show because some of the great Yan Yankees of all time Yankees. are going to be on air, including the greatest of them all since Babe Ruth anyway. Well, that's hard to say with Yankees. There have been a lot of them. But <laughs> Mickey Mantle is going to be the oh, special guest okay. on the Jerry Lawler Show tomorrow morning. Don't miss that. Hey, I'll tell you something else you shouldn't miss. If you get a chance to see Moon Dogs and Power Twins, take a look at yeah. why you should watch. It's still on the way for the USWA World Tag Titles.
The Power Twins joining us right here. You guys said you could handle them, and I tell you what, you've proved it to me. You look mighty good. That's right. You people saw it Monday night. If you were lucky enough to be there, you saw us. We can beat those moon dogs. We'll beat them in Memphis. We'll beat them in Louisville. We'll be in Tennessee. Anywhere we have to go and beat them, we will beat those moon dogs. You people saw it. You want to bring your weapons? We'll bring our weapons too. But when we walk out of that ring, we're going to be the ones who are going to be victorious. We fought them fair and square. That's the way we like to wrestle, fair and square. But if we have to, and if they want to, we'll use the weapons. We don't want to use the weapons. People get hurt when they use the weapons. We'd rather wrestle fair and square, beat them the way men should beat men, fair and square. Well, that's the word from the Power Twins. They're off to a good start against the Moon Dogs. Let's see if it continues. We'll be back after this. How about some day we've had today oh. in the USWA? Hope you've enjoyed it and hope you'll be back with us next week. Until then, for Corey Macklin, I'm Dave Brown. So long, everybody. The announcers on this program are selected and paid by parties other than this station, namely the promoters of USWA.